you know, we've got to come up with a better system, a better way to make sure that these pilots are getting the oxygen and the protection they need to go fly. If you're low on oxygen, basically, sometimes get euphoric or you'll get sleepy or you're, you're kind of pass out. And obviously, if you have to fly the airplane, it's not, it's not a good scenario. The Navy and the Air Force has been experiencing problems with oxygen levels and content and pilots blacking out. You know, you have aircraft data, you have some, you don't have a lot, but what you don't have is any instrumentation on the pilot and the, their breathing. And so what we were really focused on was really trying to identify the root cause in the pilot. Remember, physiological episodes happen in people, not aircraft. So if you don't have the pilot instrumented, then you're really not going to be able to help resolve the problems. Crew assignments, uh, I'll be in the jet. You guys will be in the control room. Jack will be talking on the radio. Yeah, the, radio. Oh, okay. the use of this project is going to, going to go for a long time because it's going to establish a fundamental data set on how pilots breathe in, in a tactical environment. NASA 1, uh, ready to that mark. NASA 850, NASA 1, that mark in 3, 2, 1, mark. High performance type aircraft like fighter jets, over the years they've become more and more advanced. They can fly with higher G's, they fly faster, they fly at higher angles of attack. With all those increases, physiological effects on pilots has increased dramatically. Every pilot's going to be different in how they react to something. They want to kind of baseline what you're like before and what you're like after. So how do we gather the data? How does it go through this process from the aircraft all the way through to arrive at the analyst's uh, desk? And what do they do with it? And one of the first things we have to do is we have to look and see what kind of flight they're doing. If they're doing a Navy configuration flight or an Air Force configuration flight. We'll take spirometry, which is basically looking at lung capacity. We do that like an hour before the flight, just right after we strap into the cockpit, and then when we come back, we'll do that again in the cockpit, and then after we, we've been out for about an hour. The RAD-97 is monitoring their pulse, their oxygen saturation, their blood. It's also monitoring how fast they're breathing. Pilot wears a Vigilox system made by Cobham. With the Vigilox system, it measures a lot of key parameters that are useful and important for understanding what the pilot is breathing in and breathing out. Put this side in first. In order to capture all the data that we want, the pilots are flying different profiles. Some are just high, high altitude flights where they're flying 40 to 50,000 feet. Uh, other ones are more aerobatic, so where they're up there doing spins and turns and dives. And then can we correlate that type of flight and how it changes, you know, kind of your lung capacity or those kinds of things. So that's what the scientists are looking for. We embarked on this with the idea that we have a lot of complex test methods that we're developing. And at the end of this, one of our goals originally is we want to be able to develop test methods that are useful to the Air Force and to the Navy in the sense that they can be used in a a repeatable, consistent way that provide really quality data that then we can compare our results with the Navy's results and the Air Force's results. So I think this will help make sure that the designs we have are set for what the pilot needs. Because if we don't really know what the pilot needs very well, we can't design to that. And previous systems I think just had a lot of margin to be able to accept different needs from a pilot. But, but now that we've gotten, you know, closer to designing those to basically just what they need, we really need to know what the pilots actually need in order to, to be safe.